All right. Hey, and thanks for tuning in this morning. Appreciate you out there. And uh, if you've been looking forward to our candidate interviews, they continue. They continue right now and will continue for the next two weeks, uh, right to October 12. Well done, sir. Uh, ballots come out on the 19th. In the House this morning, we have uh, 14th District State Representative Candidate Liz Halleck. Good morning, Liz. Good morning. The visual of the pulling the nose hair. I just can't yeah, stop right. yeah, yeah. Sorry to set, the, set a low bar to start this thing we apologize who thanks, is uh, thanks for coming in Liz. yeah definitely tell us uh, i guess in a nutshell tell us who who is liz halleck yeah thanks for, yeah thanks for having me this morning i yeah. know it's early um so i'm an attorney by trade i live here in yakima you know i've done litigation criminal defense consumer protection um probably have done some work for some of the your listeners you know all their sure. names uh you know everybody everybody dislikes lawyers until they need one right <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah um and so i'm running for the state legislature <laughs> As you said, the uh, the November election's coming up, um, and uh, th one of the reasons that I'm running is because, you know, Republican or Democrat, I think a lot of folks are very concerned about our democracy right now. Um, in fact, uh, there was a bipartisan uh, poll that came out in June. It was the George W. Bush Foundation and the Joe Biden University of Pennsylvania Foundation together showed that eight out of 10 Americans are very concerned about what's going on in our, in our democracy today. The top two things they were concerned about was money and politics, big money, and they felt that the interests of special interest groups and um, big corporate donors were driving policy. So those were some of the, re Republicans or Democrats, they're very concerned about that. So I don't take any corporate or PAC donations. I've been pretty consistent about that. And, um, you know, I want to hear from the people. And I, I love this district. You know, I've lived in all the counties in this district except Skalmania um, County. And um, I'm very concerned about accountability for these corporations when it comes to paying taxes um, and the corporate loopholes that that they get mm. but you and I might not get so that's one of the big reasons I'm running how uh, how significant does that play out on the state level I mean, yeah. we, we often hear uh, on the federal side um, concern for corporate America quote not paying its fair share and all of that but does it play out that way in the state as well yeah so it actually does if you if you do some research and i'm so i'm i'm a very big hey let's look at the research first kind of person i'm not really into rhetoric and that sort of thing if you look at the budget and policy center's research for the state of washington washington state budget and policy center um there's over 700 washington state corporate tax loopholes that at one time maybe had a, a, a good intention in mind, right? For example, um, there's a there's a, a benefit for um, forestry extraction companies that now oil extraction companies have taken over, and it wasn't designed for them. So there's a lot of old things on the book. Um, there's also some companies aren't paying their B&O taxes. There's pharmaceutical companies that are taking advantage of wholesale pharmaceutical ta tax loopholes that were meant for in-state companies. So there's over 700 corporate tax loopholes. Here's where it becomes a problem. The average person, the middle class and, and lower income person in Washington, as a percentage of their income, pays about seven times what the 1% in Washington state pay. And of course that has to do with our lack of income tax, you're right, because I knew you're gonna say that. Mm. But, but there's other things that we have to pay property taxes, yeah. the, the license right, but, base, so on and so forth. But right now we're we're taking in record levels of income, right? I mean, our, our governor, the the let me right. get this right, our tax taxable um, the revenue coming in over the next two years is expected to be off the charts. So, what are you suggesting taxing? corporations even more are you then going to roll back taxes for the middle class and the average folks right because yeah. whoever saw that happen from anybody right so what I'm talking about is a proportion of income right so the richest one percent in this state and most of them live in Seattle most of them are not paying their fair share because of their lobbying power and some of these corporate tax loopholes and Income inequality is a real thing in this state. I mean, when you're driving around, we see it every day. And what you're talking about, you know, record growth in this state. Um, so we have, ra wages have risen in this district, but relative to the growth on the other side of the state, not as quickly. And, 
you know, I am a Democrat. You all know I'm running as a Democrat. We see this from our own party being forgotten on this side, right? Um, Democrats now this year are in control. And it's very important that we don't forget the, the people on this side. Well, I hear you. I've heard that argument made by uh, several of the other Democrats running that now more than ever with Democrat control, best to have a seat at the table and all of that. And on the one hand, that that makes some sense if, if you like what, what you're going to serve up at that table. If you don't, it's you're just one more person cutting up my, my goose. Um, what about... Uh, We've we've asked all of the other candidates so far sure. ab about the initiatives because what th that does is sort of uh, unveil a little bit of your philosophy, and we've also asked them uh, to a certain extent about how um, national <laughs> politics plays out. We're seeing, and, and obviously if, at KIT we have a perspective, uh, but we see uh, we'll start with the, the Kavanaugh hearings and that sort of thing, and sure. we, we, yeah. see, we see the yeah. distress. Uh, mm -hmm. On our websites and on our Facebooks and all of this stuff, yeah. yeah. Um, but if if you know if you're a betting guy over the years in, in Eastern Washington, you're you're betting on the other side from from where you're coming from. Uh, and so, if Republicans are worked up over this, do you expect is is there any um, does that pose any kind of a burden for a Democrat trying to get a foothold at this time? That's so interesting. You mean at a, at the state level yeah, as yeah, how as the right, elections yeah, will right. play out? That's mm -hmm. so interesting. Well, I will say this, you know, you and I will go back and forth on who's right, who's wrong, yeah. you know, and we're never going to agree. True. We're not going to agree on this. I told a lot, you know, um, I'll, t I'll, g I'll give you this on the Democratic side. So now we're talking about this issue, and I, I just want to make clear that we might disagree, and then I'll go on to talk about this issue real quickly, but you, you, we all might disagree on mm -hmm. this Kavanaugh issue, but at the end of the day, I take clear stances, and so you know where I stand, my opponent has been pretty silent on this. She put up something on her profile page, blacking out her profile because it was a sexual assault page, and then a day to black <laughs> out your profile, and then it's gone. There's a lot of, and I, you know, I'm for term limits. There's a lot of career politicians out there that don't tell us how they feel, and I think that's really important for the public to know. So how is this going to play out as far as elections? I think, you know, the pundits are saying that, um, you know, if he does get appointed, it might mobilize Democrats. If he... If he doesn't get appointed, it might mobilize the other side. I think it's, you know, I don't mm -hmm. know if it's ever that clear cut. Um, you know, but the, I'll give you this. That when this whole, um, when the hearing started, there were Democrats who, just like they did to Merrick Garland, said, no, no, we don't want a hearing. Okay, that's not fair. And I came out and I said, let's listen to what he has to say. And I, I did listen and, um, you know, uh, constitutional originalism is a political philosophy and it's a real political philosophy the constitution is a complicated document there's always room for discussion about these things and he doesn't believe Kavanaugh doesn't believe in these fourth amendment on enumerated privacies personally politically I do believe in you know the fourth amendment on enumerated privacy rights keeping the, the government out of our home essentially is it and, and our bodies is, is is what that's about but um, I listened to it and now, uh, now it's gotten a little bit more complicated, right? And at the end of the day, I, I don't stand for his appointment. I don't think he has the demeanor to do it. And, of course, there's the sexual assault allegations. Okay. And we're not going to agree on this, but at the end of the day, you know where I stand. Right. And, and you I, don't have to yeah. vote for me if you don't want to. But and I, I, but and I wanted to burn we all need your, to know where people stand. Perfect. And I don't want to yep. burn yep. all your time talking yeah. about that. That's we right. want to talk about your stuff. But we just wondered if you felt that that was an, um, uh, a factor out there in, in running right oh, now. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, people are so, on both sides, they're just, you know, they really feel passionately one way or the other. And it's such an interesting discussion of gender dynamics. And it's just fascinating. Uh, 826, if you're just tuning in, we are talking uh, with uh, 14th District State Representative Candidate Liz Halleck. And Liz, uh, we've got about well, four minutes left here just to run through these initiatives and how you feel about them. Uh, <laughs> initiative 1631, the, 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 the uh, well, I guess it would be the pollution tax, as it's being called. Well, it's carbon fee. The carbon yeah. fee, yeah. So how do you feel about that? So it's a carbon fee for specific things. And when we first came on, I said I... I I support polluters paying, but I was mad about all the exemptions in this. Um, had a conversation. I think it's Reven Carlisle is like, well, you all are mad about the exemptions, but we made deals with folks, right? 
Um, so I am I am going to support this one. Okay. Initiative 1639, uh, gun restrictions, uh, increased background yeah. checks, things like that. Uh, yeah, you know, I've heard so. You, you go on my website, you know, don't just assume that folks feel the same way. You know, my, my, my grandfather was murdered in his home, own home. He was a lifelong NRA member, you know, veteran, so on and so forth. Um, go on my website and, and you'll see how, how I feel about that one. And your website is? Liz. 414, F-O-R, 14.org. I-940, the uh, police officer de-escalation training, calling for more de-escalation training for officers and things like that. Um, absolutely. And I think, you know, I've spoken with some of the candidates for sheriff and stuff. I think there needs to be some more education about the legal standards in that bill. And that's one thing about me, you know, I've seen how these bills really work in real life as an attorney. Um, so I think there needs to be some education and, and, and uh, I'm yeah. unequivocal. I, I support I-940 and I think candidates need to come out and not say, well, I didn't vote for this because the Supreme Court technicality. I think, tell us how you really feel about these things so we can vote. And initiative 1634, grocery taxes and no on grocery taxes bill. So this, uh, this initiative. Is, yeah, this is the, <laughs> the interesting one. It's to make sure localities can't tax the any groceries and it's funded by you know pepsi cola and all this stuff so i think you have to vote if you don't support municipalities taxing groceries then you would vote yes on this one so yeah i'm fine kind of confusing I, i'm <laughs> i'm fine with not taxing local groceries that's fine or sodas whatever i i i have a confession i am a starbucks drinker <laughs> i think a lot of us are <laughs> I think a lot of us are. Well, with about a minute left, tell us uh, tell us uh, why you are the best choice over Gina Musbunker. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love I love this district. I love the people in this district. They're the strongest people in this district. They're the most outspoken and and wonderful, hardworking people in this district. I love this district. Um, I'm a very patriotic person. Um, came come from a family that really values science and intellect. And um, the reason I'm running is because I will speak out to those folks who are not being fair and not representing our district well. Um, you know, I don't pretend to be something I'm not. I don't believe my opponent is really a moderate conservative. Otherwise, I would not be running. Um, I, I believe I'm, I'm someone of a middle ground person. I'm open to facts and data, science. Um, and I want to work on economics, improving the economy here, really tough issues, tax policy, getting big money out of politics. And that's why I'm running, because this district needs real, not vanity project. We need real leadership here. Thank you so much for having me.